hello guys welcome back in this video let's model this bourbon biscuit i really like the look and feel of this and also it has got some uh, additional sugar granules on it so i believe that it would be a great learning experience while doing this so i would take you through the modeling process and uh, also the texturing and adding sugar granules through mash network and all and completely uh, rendering up um, with all the look and feel and uh, as, I, as I told you to, it should be a great learning experience so I've uh, put this um, image plane uh, in the backdrop and top view so I'll just move it a little bit down so that I can comfortably work with so I'll take a polygonal cube and then um, I would like to put um, a dimensions of 18 and then 8 and I would like to just see if, we, if I'm uh, close to the reference here so this looks uh, one number bigger so I'm going to take it uh, as a 17 and I move this reference uh, to the center so roughly this is uh, to that size and this is not precisely uh, a rectangle it's it's the, the reference is quite uh, organic uh, it's not precisely rectangle and I, I really like the way this is uneven and real and uh, I would like to go to the x-ray mode and then put on this uh, subdivision on so as you could see it is uh, 17 units so uh, what I really like here is the hole uh, is after two and a half points here and then for every three units uh, this hole is here so I would like to reduce this to 16 actually so that I can get precise numbers and then I would like to add 16 subdivisions uh, this way and uh, 8 subdivisions this way uh, I, I believe that this is of real important uh, especially the holes what we have so I'm going to select this point here and I'm going to select this point here and then make holes there later just try to make it look bit organic um, I just try to sculpt it um, it should not be precisely centers again uh, there's a problem here that is uh, if I create a hole and uh, this should be a very tedious process so I'm going to delete this faces and then I would like to uh, select these vertex points okay and then apply chamfer okay uh, I'm just selecting that and I'm applying the chamfer vertex tool and then that bring up this hole but again this is uh, becoming too tedious so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the edges actually okay So you should able to see I've selected the edges uh, plus sign edges and I'm going to delete them okay then what I'm going to do is select all of those faces and apply poke face tool okay and then that uh, brings up a pole there and then I'm going to select that vertex every time selecting this way can be very hard so I can go to the select menu and then choose similar so one vertex I've selected rest of them all got selected and I'm going to apply the chamfer vertex and that should be fine now I select that and select similar and then use this tool called circularize and that makes it circle so I can generally use uh, the radial offset and then try to make this of um, that size of 0 0.11 and that should be fine here I'm going to select this and uh, press 
um, or maybe I can extrude them before that I need to select the faces okay select similar delete the faces now when I select this I press ctrl E to extrude and make sure that you are pulling this points towards the positive Z axis if you don't do that uh, there is a chance of uh, normals getting reverse so you should always pull in the positive Z axis of the model now I got some uh, basic shape here so once uh, that is achieved what I am going to do is I am going to select this border line and I am going to apply bevel and I am going to add segments okay so 0 0.4 that should be fine I am going to select this line also again uh, I need not spend all the time just go select similar and then bevel it okay and I'm going to keep it more round and then when I apply smooth you should get uh, this kind of uh, nice roundness okay I want to select the vertex points and I'm going to move it slightly down so that I will get some thickness there and um, I'm going to select this line okay from here to there convert selection to faces and grow selection quickly and then I'm going to slightly put soft selection on and then move it like that okay and then shrink selection Okay, that should give that nice bulge and uh, this points uh, have to be fixed okay so I'm going to select that point and I shall do this with uh, both sides It's okay, uh, uh, it should be more organic and uh, these lines also need to be selected. I'll choose select similar and then move it. Now I've got a decent uh, model here. I will just uh, try to make it more uh, uneven as I told you okay so I've got this model uh, before I make this as a copy I'm going to do the UV unwrapping of this so let's assign a Lambert shader and in the color I will pick the checker map press 6 on the keyboard I'll put the repeats to 20 by 20 and then give that color so I will select this image plane add it into a layer and then open the UV editor and then start do the UV unwrapping Okay, so what I am going to do here okay there's some uh, real issue um, I think this is because of the UVs in depth so let me apply planar mapping in the Y axis and then project it and you should be able to see that problem is gone 
and what I have to do here is uh, cut it along the uh, edges so I'm going to select uh, any of these lines and I'm going to cut this okay and I'm going to select this line on the bottle on the other side and then separate this and it may not get separated because we have uh, we should also cut here so I'm going to select this line here and then choose select uh, similar it's not selecting so I think I should select it manually I will select this line actually so it's not uh, selecting the edges with a similar tool so no problem I will manually select it and then I'm going to use the cut UVs and then come down and do the same thing So let's cut the UVs here and then now separate it so you got top side you got the bottom side uh, you got the side also so I'm going to select that line and I'm going to cut the sides here Okay, so uh, if you could see the checkers, okay, I'm going to select all the UVs and apply unfold. Okay, so you should be able to see that checkers nicely. And then I'm going to select this one and apply unfold. I will rotate this and then put it there. Now select this apply unfold you can use control u press control u and then it uh, becomes the unfold now the last thing is I need to cut the line in the center so I'm going to use this in fact I can do it much easier way I guess okay I'll show you how so select that edge and then cut maybe I'm I did it too complex way Okay, once that is done select all the UVs and press Ctrl U again that opens up I think I've not cut here cut Ctrl U so the model has been nicely unfolded you should able to see that okay delete the history now what I'm going to do here is I've got this model I'm going to move it upside modify freeze transformation okay uh, to precisely make it symmetry on the opposite side what I have to do is I have to set the pivot point to the center actually and then press ctrl D and then rotate it 90 degrees and you get uh, very much you know symmetry of that but this looks too um, far 
so I'm going to move this little bit closer and then move the pivot point there and then choose freeze transformation okay now press ctrl D and then rotate it 90 degrees so that I get this model onto the opposite side okay uh, looks good so far and now let's take a cube and then scale it to the thickness I'm going to select these two objects and then put it into a layer so that I can work on this I can subdivide this like that okay and then what I can do is I can select all of that vertices and then choose average vertices tool and then it becomes neat and round soften edge uh, and then you get this nice piece you can just make it look more uneven by selecting edit mesh transform component tool so here you can use this random and then just push it outside and then that becomes more organically uneven and then bring back your model there okay that looks uh, pretty okay at this point you can maybe select the scale and then make it look from the gap so once that is done I have to open my UV editor and then uh, UV unwrap it so I'm going to select everything and then just un unfold it because uh, the cuts are in the right place but it's not really working for me so I'm going to select this and then see what really happened let me do a planar mapping on the y-axis okay and then what I do is I will identify the scene so select this line and this line cut it select this line this line cut it select this line this line cut it so that will open up the flap select this line cut select these two lines cut select these two lines cut select these two lines cut now apply unfold that's it <laughs> so I'll assign the Lambert shader and then you should able to see the UVs are done so if you could see here we have uh, this all objects which I need to do the layout so I'm going to do the layout of these two objects first so whenever you're doing layout it is very important to uh, freeze a transformation so I use this freeze transformation and then delete the history of it and then go to modify and then do the layout and then make sure that um, the layout does a decent job there okay so yeah the checkers are okay let me just try to scale it slightly in so that I can um, you know don't make that UV touch to the edge or else we get some issues in substance uh, painter so yeah so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this one and then rotate it 90 degrees there so that I can generally create more room uh, for this so there are some shells I need to move it aside and then I'm going to scale it so that I get a bigger um, space utilization so that's uh, good So I'm just trying to keep all the UVs uh, of same size. These are all actually the holes, okay, on both sides. So
So what I am doing here is when I am selecting this shell and trying to get the texel density it is 8.6 so um, so I got this uh, texel density and then I can generally set it to this so that it gets the same UV space this is uh, something you can apply uh, to match the checker size of one object to other like that okay so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select this shell and then get the texel density which is 19 and then select this one select that and then set it so what that actually does is the checkers will be of uh, same size here with this so uh, so I want to keep the UVs of these two objects separately and then and this one separately and uh, I don't scale it uh, like that I think I should uh, somewhere take a chance here of matching the checker size so you can uh, see um, this checker should be this this should be correct okay the checkers are same okay so I'll be selecting uh, this all objects okay the UVs are separate for the cream part and the UVs are separate for the biscuit part okay so you can select all of them delete the history and then you can export them so I go to the file and then choose uh, export selection and then export it so I've exported uh, I've just exported this uh, model to OBJ format now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this into substance painter once that is done I'll come here file new choose the bourbon 3 4k texture and say ok now what this will actually do is it will allow me to hide uh, based on the materials here and I can work on this texture so what I'm going to do now is go to file not file go to the texture settings and then bake the maps so I'll be going to the ID and then I'll be choosing a mesh ID and poly group method and then we have all that other attributes set to the default bake selected textures okay So let me check with the maps here. I've got a normal map which I've not done so perfectly okay. The world space normal, the ID maps, ambient occlusion, curvature, position, thickness. Okay, so all good. So I've got the maps and let's explore. Uh, this one so if you could see uh, this is the cream and this is the biscuit so I'll go for the biscuit first and then start by taking a new layer and this layer will be um, something like that and then choose roughness so that it it's quite rough and um, yeah good to go so I'll take a, a copy of this I press ctrl D and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly darken this up and also reduce the height so that I do something I get some texture to it so let's put a black or white mask and let's add a fill layer and then explore any texture which is going to be uh, noisy enough so so you should be able to see I'm getting some uh, some texture there 
I'll choose the black and white spots and that should be fine I got that nice holes and all that uh, I will duplicate this layer press ctrl D and then I will remove this black and white spot and also I'll just make this color more darker and then here I'll add a fill layer and then choose um, let's search for this marble texture I'll explore all that possible maps here to get that ups and downs so I'll, I'll start taking more uh, layers of uh, this kind so I press ctrl D and then in the fill I would like to take uh, another type of grunge which is going to add uh, more details to it you should be able to see that nice cracks on this model press ctrl D and then I'm going to take another variant of this and then invert it then repeat it five times so you should be able to see you got that nice texture to the biscuit okay I'm just referring my uh, image and uh, you want uh, very prominent cracks in any specific area then what you can generally do is you can choose uh, okay uh, this kind of texture I want to non proportionally scale it okay that means I want to put this to 5 and I want to put this to 1 so that you could able to see uh, more lines and then you can rotate if possible and then you get that directional lines there okay and uh, you can use uh, a planar mapping and then rotate it uh, in any direction you wanted that textures to be so it will flow in that particular direction only I select this layer and then reduce uh, give more depth here I'm adding a distort here to get that lines on the side it's looking good in some areas so I need to just paint it paint it off so how do I do that mm, you can use the paint layer and then start painting it off So I'm not expecting that in the center, that's the whole idea. I 
I'll put uh, a copy of this layer press ctrl D and then delete all of them and then in the marble section I will choose uh, a texture which is basically of just holes let's see which one is closely related to my requirement black and white spots is really nice but let me see and uh, the UV should be off so that gives that nice holes but I want to see explore something else just random dots I will repeat this to 3 actually it's one or two is enough it's adding up that nice noise the holes control D and then choose another uh, dirt this is having too many holes but uh, this layer should have very uh, less intense holes okay and then this noise should be of high frequency or let me try with low frequency 1.25 1 1.5 I'll select the height layer and then a positive bump is really nice so let me choose that and then what I do is I just change the color slightly so let me go to the roughness area and then see the roughness also so there is no roughness happening here at all why is that I'm going to reduce the roughness Oops. and that becomes more shiny actually it looks like a sugar glaze let me go back to the roughness attribute and uh, start working with this layers okay this area is slightly glossy all are normal modes so I need to choose a different set of blending modes I choose multiply so you should, you should see um, the lines uh, started becoming more prominent let's see how this is overall looking like so it's looking uh, too wet and uh, let's make it rough
I should be able to see that nice uh, creases. So this layer. So I need uh, the color, the roughness, I don't want metallic, I don't want emissive and then export it. So both the textures are exported. So let's open up in Maya. So I've got this. I will assign a shader and that should be AI standard surface shader. Okay. I will use a physical uh, sorry physical sky I switch off the camera and then just go for a render you get this now what I do is I select this model okay um, actually I, I switch off the smooth I press 3 on the keyboard delete the history and then just combine it uh, the reason I'm combining is I just uh, wanted the displacement here a subdivision here to be same so I'm using catalog subdivision with three and displacement I use auto bump feature on so I will open hyper shade then bring up the shader and then the file so we have this uh, shader I'm going to choose the height map okay this one is the height map select that and make sure that this is uh, in a raw format and then drop it into the displacement material here select the color balance of the displacement put a value of 0.1 here and, and minus 0.05 there and then see what you get there so your model should get that displacement like what I have actually achieved okay should be able to see that nice lines coming up you want to multiply the displacement you can put here 0.2 and minus 0.1 here so that you get more uh, strong details for the model and now what I do is I select the color and then choose the file and uh, browse the base color here now when I render it you should get the and if, you, if you're able to see it's too dark so I go here and then choose raw and then render it So I'm getting the same color here in terms of render. So what is that I need to do here is uh, go to the roughness and bring up the file and then choose the roughness map and then choose the raw again. So you get that specular highlights broken up. So uh, I'll just open the hyper shade. And then use the color correct tool. And then connect this to the color. And I use the red channel to the specular roughness as it's black and white any single channel would do and then let me see if 
I get the result. I should be able to see the the result here. And if you really don't like the way the color of the biscuit is, that is where your color correction tools come into picture. So you can use a color correction tool and then connect this color correction tool there and connect it that way. Now you have this option called multiply. You start multiplying this color there. Okay, so you get that nice uh, specular break shine and then that organic cracks coming up in your model. So lastly, I would select this and then go to the geometry section and then in the bump map, I would like to choose the file and choose a tangent space normal and then a, a space to be raw and uh, choose the normal map okay so you should get that normal so sometimes when we choose the wrong color space you get this odd result so choose it to the right uh, color space and you get it correctly now when i've added normal map that extra character is added to the biscuit that more roughness is added and you should be able to see that nice uh, detail on top of it so if you could see here I have got uh, the lighting I'm just rotating it so that you could able to see all the angles and their sometimes uh, to study the specularity also okay so I really like the way it uh, has come so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this and for this I'm going to add a AI standard surface shader and then let's uh, make it slightly rough and uh, in the base color we will bring up the file so I'm going to choose this color here and then choose a raw format and then render it so you get this uh, variation on the color again as I told you you can always go to the hyper shade bring up that shader then choose the color correct node I, I take uh, there are two color correction nodes here I'm taking AI color correction node and then connect it to the input and the out color to be the base color and then choose that color what we have picked so that I get that nice tint to that and you want that extra dark you can always make it more dark and then it looks more darker than what it is so slight roughness is uh, always good and then you can add some um, I can use the bump map here I'm using the uh, noise and then I'm going to choose uh, the wispy noise there and then I should get this nice texture so I'm going to take a bump value of 0.1 and that should do I know it's not visible to the camera but it's uh, how we can generally add more character to the model so yeah it looks good now we will actually uh, group them okay so one thing is really important when I do the sugars here I want all these biscuits to be one geometry that's uh, really important for me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a plate model and then put them into the plate and all the biscuit part will be one piece of model okay so 
let's close it I will take a, a CV curve tool okay CV curve tool and then just reset it enable the grid I'm going to hide this light so that I can model it correctly so CV curve tool I'm changing the background with alt B so I've got this uh, nice uh, shape I'm going to use the surface menu and use the revolve tool and I'm going to use the polygons quads general per span number of isoperms and I'm setting it to 2 by 2 and then just apply the revolve um, now I can add sections I can uh, reverse this by selecting this curve and then use reverse curve direction so go to the curves and do that and the model would be reversed so if you feel that the plate is too small just scale the curve and it should do the job for you and I really like the way the plate has come up I select that and assign a AI standard surface shader and then leave it just like that and then go for a render and I'm not getting the light because I've switched off the skylight and then you get this nice result so let's see how this is going to look so now we will quickly do the set dressing or, or just uh, scatter them just make some copies and put it all over the plate okay so what we will do is we have these two pieces here so I'm going to select that and then group it okay and then start placing them so just be very careful in terms of uh, placing them respect that physics and then your model should look uh, correct I'm just trying to make it uh, I mean it, it should touch the ground and then here it should make it or uh, the biscuit should support here uh, there are so many uh, tools these days which are basically um, I mean softwares which are using this uh, dynamics to place them 